amazing quiz so by now so thank you for joining this logged in together with better virtual meetup sessions by delhi hardware hacker club and i like delhi so this is a we have a planned of, as most of you already know that we have a schedule for the sessions we have made and they are all available on our, on our calendar so please subscribe this is the old version of the poster so we have updated the calendar with the new talks so please uh, subscribe to the calendar to stay updated on the talks all the sessions will be live uh, lively interactable on this platform we will continue our video conferencing on jitsi and live stream the sessions on youtube and today mm, interesting quiz yeah so this is the third quiz so far we use kahoot for the quiz and the quiz winner gets uh, plant squid and stay connected with us on twitter and take the spin and do subscribe and do join our meetup group as well and we are always looking for sponsors if you want to sponsor our winners the winners of this quiz in any way by giving your credits to any platform or any startup or if any product on your in your company if you want to sponsor the winners if you sponsor the meetups we organize if you sponsor us in any way possible do reach out to us via twitter telegram or mailing list and we have a code of conduct the link is available in the chat but if you do not want to read it's just be nice to everyone and please set up your display names and just see to something we that we can recognize you with follow cc mute your microphones when you are not speaking raise your hand when you want to speak and if you have any questions uh, which is might not be the case today because today is a community check in so we'll uh, discuss with the things we have been doing this week of we learn the books we read the projects we made so we'll discuss those things with each other at today's session if you have a talk you want to propose you can create a issue on our github page and have two quizzes so far and they have been great so the winner of first quiz was raju dev and the second the winner for second quiz was ruchika and the current score board is available in the chat to see who is leading the score board and today's thank you animesh to prepare for today to help us with the today's quiz to compile all the questions for today's quiz and i think we can start with the quiz animesh can you just please uh, acknowledge that you uh, you're there and can yeah take over okay so hey everyone i am animesh verma and i am your host today for today's quiz hi animesh hey all right let me share my screen okay so is visible yeah maybe you can share the game pin so everyone can join by then yeah i'm doing it all right then okay good um i do not know on youtube live stream it is not showing your screen Uh, all right now it's work okay all right Let's play. Okay, so everyone can see the pin, right? Yeah. Okay, this is too short. Yeah, we can see that. No, uh, I cannot see the pin. Uh, if you can, maybe you need to refresh because it's there. Yeah. Thank you. 
should discuss into the six players so far uh, are you can you reduce your volume a bit yeah okay okay so everyone who joined uh, maybe right ready in the chat box and when everyone is ready animesh you can go ahead and start the game So seven players right now. Uh, I'm expecting more. Everyone who's ready, type ready in the chat box. Let me just share it in the Telegram group as well, the pin, so that everyone can join if they are not able to see the screen. I see some people who are not here but still joining the quiz. So are they joining from YouTube or something? Um, you are talking about which person exactly? Because everyone is uh, here. I think Taskmaster and Sonic. Uh, he is here. Hello, hello. Sonic. Hi. So. It's... Oh, okay. All right, so ten players so far. सब खबर रहती है मुझे. So everyone ready? Shall we start? Or should we wait? Yeah, I think we can start. We can start. Yeah. All right then. Animesh, do read the questions. What? Uh, do read the questions one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, also don't play the music. Okay. Uh, you can mute the music on. The yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's muted. All right, so let's start now. Ready? Yep. Okay. So, which of the following things in computer programming was called a billion-dollar mistake by its own creator? Pointers, null reference, closures, or dynamic typing? All right, eight correct answers. So the answer was null reference, and Taskmaster has taken the first lead. Move on the next question. All right, identify the correct git command to apply the apply a stash object from a particular index in the stash stack. Well, the correct answer was the first one. And Taskmaster is still leading, and Zion is taking the second place. Move on the next one. Which of the following JavaScript execution engines used in Node.js? Nash on, JS Core, Spider Monkey, or Viet? Tukka. Still, we got seven correct answers. And Taskmaster still leading. Zion is on a streak. And moving on to the next question. This is true or false question. Dot git key files a git feature that can be used to track an empty directory in a git repository.
could you turn off the music maybe or lower it okay so seven correct answer the correct answer was false and sonic has taken the second place taskmaster is still leading moving on to the next question and this is a double point question what would be the output of the following code And two correct answer, which was third option, compilation error. And <laughs> Sonic in the lead. Taskmaster has fallen into second place. Zion is on third. So moving on to the next question. Quiz with double points. What HTTP response code is returned from a WebSocket server for a request to initialize a WebSocket connection? <laughs> Three correct answers, which was one zero one. And now Raju Dev has taken the second place. Sonic still leading. Taskmasters on third. Next question. Which of the following Android app stores provides only false Android apps? Only open source apps are there. Free and open source. Yep. Oh, nine correct answers, which was F-Droid. And Sonic still leading, Rajadev is still on second one. So no changes on the podium. Next question is a true or false. HTTP2 protocol standard does not require the use of HTTPS connection. True or false? Protocol standard. Whoa, we got a 50-50 here. Five true, five false. The correct one was true. And Taskmaster has taken the second place now. This is the double point answer. Which of the following TCP ports is, is standardized for secure IRC connections? One correct answer. That was 6697. And Sonic still leading. Raj is still on second position, and Taskmaster is taking third. 
True or false question. Web workers in JavaScript can access and modify the HTML DOM of the page. True or false? Man, no correct answer. <laughs> this was a bummer. They believe too much in JavaScript. <laughs> so, no change on podium positions as expected. What is the full form of course? Five correct answers, which was cross origin resource sharing. And Taskmaster has taken the second position now. Sonic still leading. Now, next question. Starting from what version of Android OS is SC Linux fully enforced for security? Four correct answers, which was 5.0. And Rajadev has taken the lead. Six, sorry. Rajadev is on the second position now. Sonic is still leading. And Taskmaster is now in third position. The final question In what year is the timestamp rollover supposed to happen in NTP, that is, Network Time Protocol? No correct answers. Wow. The correct answer was 2036, which no one selected. Yeah, 2038. No, that is for. But for NTP, it's 2036. For okay. different constraints. I'll explain that later. So now, on third position, we've got Taskmaster. Second Yay. by Raju Dev. And first position goes to Sonic. Congratulations, Sonic. Hey, congrats. Call be heavy. She is not even here. She played and she won on YouTube. Good lag. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's the end of for the quiz. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Animesh. Thank you so much for helping with that. Yeah. Am I the highest in points? Hey, Raju Dev wins. Um, Raju Dev, koi milega. Animesh, uh, can you can you share the points? If you are, then you need to make the next quiz. Um, sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> I'll share the report with CM. Uh, maybe we need to calculate the cumulative scores of all yeah. three. Of course, I didn't participate in one, so I could be, could not be. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we can start. So anyone? Does anyone has a, have any doubts regarding those questions? Yeah, I think uh, NTP wala. Yeah, so because this is because NTP in NTP there are two different factors. One is it uses a 64-bit timestamp variable, but in that the first 32 bits are for seconds, and the next 32 bits are for fraction of seconds. So that makes the its resolution around 
2 to the power minus 31 seconds. Okay. And the second factor is that the epoch for NTP is set on 1st January of 1900 instead of 1970. So compiling all those factors, the rollover time is two years ahead of the actual Unix rollover. That is in 1938. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. And I guess someone, I think someone has a doubt regarding that code. The compilation error one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can talk about that as well. Mm, let me share my screen again so I can show the code. Okay. So you can see this code snippet, right? Yep. So the trick was this register keyword. You know, uh, when I saw that register keyword, uh, I the moment I just saw that, saw that I clicked the answer D, like the option D. Uh, I thought that it will be a runtime error. No, no, it's a compilation error. It triggers a compilation. Yeah. Basically, pointers, was... basically, pointers cannot cannot store the register at a reference of a register variable. Yeah, and uh, I knew that it will be error, but uh, it will be a compilation error or something. I didn't know that. So yeah. I went for runtime. That, was, that, that was, was a trick. It's a compilation error. Yeah, though. Makes sense. OK. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Animesh. That was a really good quiz. So we can start with the normal meetup flow. Uh, so okay. these are the quiz which we have weekly. And if anyone wants to volunteer to help make the next week quiz. Uh, yeah, I have a funny remark from Taskmaster. Feels more like a JS developers meetup quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes to add their touch. That's OK. So okay. if anyone wants to volunteer, uh, make the next week quiz, uh, reach us out on Telegram. There's a separate uh, group for quiz where uh, Shivam is uh, dedicating 100% time. So I believe, <laughs> I, believe, <laughs> I believe he's not able to play that because of that. So thanks a lot to Shivam as well, uh, because he's helping every everyone make the quiz. And uh, maybe because he's not able to play because of that, he knows all the questions beforehand. So thank you very much, Shivam and Animesh, uh, for making this week quiz. And if anyone wants to help with the next one, uh, please reach us out. I think Kuntal has showed some interest, but he has some network issues. So uh, maybe he can make and we can present. But let's see if anyone wants to, just please ping us. All right, so going back to the normal meetup flow, uh, we can start with the weekly show and tell, uh, where we talk about uh what you are what you were doing in this week so monday to friday till what what projects you are working on if it's official if it's like hobby project <laughs> if you learn something oh, new uh, if you learn something new if you uh if you want to share some hack if you want to share some quick tricks so we can do it uh voluntarily like anyone can unmute and start Talking about their project, or one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, or we can go round robin. Yep. So, uh, did you guys check out RTX voice thingy? Uh, the RTX voice thingy. So, uh, right now I'm sitting in my room and a cooler is running right beside me, and I don't think you can actually hear that cooler, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's because I have enabled RTX voice. So, RTX voice is a new uh, project by NVIDIA. So it is uh, it is using AI and stuff. Basically, it's using the compute from a graphics card to clear out all the noise from the microphone. I can also use it to clean the noise from the output as well. But I have noticed that it's like it's still in the beta phase. So the output tends to get over suppressed, and many times the ambient music also gets suppressed. No, that's amazing. So is that like using some kind of noise cancellation or something? Yep. So they're using the compute from the graphics card to process it through AI and do some really cool noise cancellation. Awesome. So share some links if you have. And mm, one second. Sure. I believe this is this is just for NVIDIA folks, right? 
um yeah uh, you can use 10 series 16 series graphics card as well like uh, the beta software has like where, uh, where it is extracted the xml file has an area for constraints so if you remove that you can use the gtx cards as well but otherwise it's uh, uh, like it's hard coded to just be run on rtx graphics cards awesome anyway that's really cool so if you are saying that you are sitting behind mm-hmm. the cooler and your voice is like crystal clear so must be working really good i'll try to disable it once um, yeah yeah, yeah. That, that hello hello um can you hear me yeah we can hear you so you can disable that and we can know the difference uh, one second microphone um so so well, that's actually cool so next time hello, we got hello, hello yeah we can hear you um so is there any noise mm, not really yeah now we can now i i can hear okay uh, nice. one second <laughs> i really have to <laughs> okay one second uh Okay, so now I've switched over to the RTX voice. Uh, was... <laughs> and you got disconnected. <laughs> and you got disconnected. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. Um, you can hear that. So can you hear any noise right now? Yeah, we can hear that now. The noise? Yeah. Sure. Okay, one second. Mm. Yeah. So you can hear the cooler right now? Right, yes, yeah, we can. Hmm? Yeah, I can hear that. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> okay, so like otherwise, all in, in all, I notice it works pretty well. So maybe it's a beta software, so there are some issues. Yeah, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> and reminds me, next time we're gonna record a podcast, we might use that. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm just dropping the link. Just one. That's that's really cool. And maybe in our online talks too. What's that? This tool. Yeah, but mm-hmm. yeah, we need to have a media. I do. Uh, <laughs> works for me. Does this work on Linux distributions? Um, I don't think so. They just have released the beta for Windows, I think. Okay. So I have been working quite a lot in noise cancellation at my work. So if anyone wants to know how that works, it I I can give us. Short uh, brief. So, what exactly is uh, you have a mm-hmm. speaker and a microphone? That's the like basic uh, thing you can uh, do a noise cancellation demo with. Uh, one microphone, one speaker, and one DSP. That is a digital signal processor. Uh, why DSP? We need a lot of computation like the Fourier transforms, discrete uh, maths, and all. Uh, so, what happens is the uh, microphone uh, needs to be trained. Uh, to identify what is the noise and what is uh, the desired uh, sound. Uh, once the training is done, and that is not a machine learning training, make sure. That is not a machine learning training, that is a normal uh, training process of DSP. So once the training is done, the microphone can pick the noise levels and it can send it to the DSP. And what DSP does, it generates an anti-noise signal. And what is an anti-noise signal? It's one it, it's same signal with same frequency, same amplitude, but 180 degree out of phase. So what happens is both the signal convolute together and they cancel each other. And that is the basic principle behind noise cancellation. Okay, so... Is that Linux compatible? What's that? Is that solution Linux compatible? Uh, what that solution means? The one you're working on. Uh, so what what I'm working on is uh, in automotive, and that goes inside a car. And oh. to, to be precise, Cadillac. <laughs> uh, oh. it, it's for uh, it's for noise cancellation inside the car cabinets. 
uh, and it does uh, 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 local noise cancellation, engine noise cancellation, and even road noise cancellation. So on the on the on the car uh, uh, lower deck, we have accelerometer, and that picks the noise from the roads, and we can also cancel that. So that is for automotive. Uh, but sure, okay. uh, if you want, uh, you can Google and you can make something uh, like that yourself using mic and speakers uh, and operational amplifiers and DSPs. And there are some projects available uh, with Arduinos and different microcontrollers which you can make on internet. And Just, I think uh, uh, is there any difference between active noise con cancellation and noise cancellation? Yeah, there is. So uh, there are two kinds of noise cancellation. One is passive noise cancellation, where you do not need any energy source. And how you obtain that is by using some noise absorbing materials, for example, uh, forms, uh, curtains, like these kinds of materials. So in a, in a car, uh, we achieve uh, true noise cancellation with using both active and passive. Active is where you use energy source to do some computation and do uh, noise cancellation, which I already mentioned about. So using both this technique, you can uh, tween, uh, you can tweak down to the lowest level of uh, noise cancellation, and uh, that's how it's done. Uh, talking about car, it's bit it's bit difficult compared to the headphone because headphone you have like very small area around your ear, and it's a very small environment where you need to cancel. But in car, which is like huge cabins and uh, noise sources are more uh, than just you know uh, local noises, so that's a bit challenging there. Uh, I think there is one video by Mehdi, Electroboom. Yeah. Electroboom. He yeah. has a video on ANC. Yeah, on noise cancellation. And he has made noise cancellation using uh, operation amplifiers, I believe. And uh, actually, he demonstrated one of, one of, uh, one of the Kickstarter projects, which promised to give you a noise-free zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he was like ranting about it that that's not possible. You cannot have perfectly soundproof environment. And he went ahead and showed how that's not possible. And then he made his own demo how you can achieve a small noise cancellation. Uh, one experiment I would really like to do. So we have a lot of circuit playgrounds board with us. I think Zion has one, Mason has one, I have one, Philo has few. Uh, what we can do is uh, circuit playground board has microphone as well as speaker. So what we can do is we can use two circuit playground boards and circuit Python to demonstrate an active noise cancellation. So if anyone is interested to do that project, let's do it together. And that would be a really good demo to show how that works. Uh, and also the best part about is uh, circuit Python now supports a micro lab, which is a NumPy like library. And using that micro lab, you can do a fast Fourier transform. So I think it's quite possible to do active noise cancellation using these kinds of things. So maybe if anyone is interested, we can do it together. Just saying. Yeah, sure. Awesome. So uh, thank you, Taskmaster, for sharing that. So we can start the show and tell. We can go round robin, and we can start with Zion. So Zion, what have you been working this week? Let me share my screen for that. Sure. So one thing is this, um, I've been working on um, donating my devices, which are like uh, not used 90% uh, of the time uh, for the Rosetta project. So this project is like um, helping some scientists do their stuff um, in research for COVID and all. So what is this is like I have donated uh, seven cores of my phone and some calculations are going on over here. And these are some calculations which are pending. And similarly, um, I have done it for on my laptop also. Um, it should be here. So there are some uh, processes going on. And these are like scheduled one also. Like there are four cores, so it's running on like some four of the cores. And Apart from that, I've created a small team for ILEP. Uh, it should be uh, somewhere I've logged in, maybe. So you can go over there from uh, boinc.bakers.org. So over there, um, it shows like how much you have uh, computed by showing your total credits and all. And 
there is a team also and it shows the total stars of the team uh, currently it shows that like there are three members um and like it shows like ayan have donated um done like 262 credits uh, as we started yesterday only uh, i started a day before that so i have 3000 some credits satyagam also joined but none of the credits are like yet accumulated over there this is what i am doing cool and i'm planning to add my tv when it's not been used um i have already added seven cores of my phone out of eight um and for my pc i have done like when like less than 50% of the cpu is being used i can like uh, it will use like keep running and when the usage uh, goes above 50% of the cpu uh, it will uh, suspend so like it doesn't hamper my work also but what is the specification requirement for phones any any minimum um, um it should be arm 64 i think uh, so, minimum i think is 2 gb ram okay um it will work with 1 gb also but uh, the models are pretty big sometimes and uh, sometimes it is like they are very small so i don't think like that is ram is a much of a constraint uh, the storage can be a constraint uh, like it downloaded 10 models uh, for calculation and uh, it's taking like 10 gb for that yeah uh, will a raspberry pi work yeah. um i don't know about that yeah so i shared i think uh, on the first show and tell uh, raspberry pi 4 support is fully there uh, because it's arm 64 and it has more than 2 uh, gigs of ram pi 2 by uh, Pi two and Pi three again, uh, because the jobs are so uh, so big, uh, they might be a bottleneck, and for that reason, they might not send you the job. But uh, if you have multiple Pi twos or Pi threes, I have seen some people uh, using them as a cluster and then donating that. So maybe that is one approach you can take. I'm not really sure, but uh, you can check Rosetta at home, and uh, there is uh, details there about how to run it on Pi. Uh, also, there is a video by. uh gary explains from android authority on how to run it on raspberry pi uh also one thing is uh, so there are some uh people who want to donate their free phones so some of them have more than one phone Uh, but they're not necessarily back uh, from a very technical background. So, uh, is there is it is this is it possible we can have a shared gist somewhere where, where we can dump all the information in a very layman terms, so it's easy for them to get started. Uh, that is something which I got a feedback from from different communities where people are not very technical. So what we can do is we can like have some screenshots, and we can use some arrows to like create. a small tutorial kind of jits and then host that on our website also yeah if 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 anyone is willing to uh, contribute on that maybe we can start with a repo and or a gist and we can put there so maybe zion you can take a lead there okay i will try that um but there is one small problem with this um actually this app is like designed for very old um phones so it might or might not work with like every phone so that can be a problem and people might come complaining uh, i have tested on two of my phones and uh, one had the option to run it with, uh, without uh, using the charging socket and one uh, didn't had that option like so like if i cannot like uh, put a phone on like charging at uh, like 100% of the time so like that can be a problem to some okay Okay, so we'll put put everything there if needed. Hmm. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. And next we can go to Mason. So because of this lockdown, I started to write blogs. Um, 
using the circuit python ada food circuit python board and i was working with many projects i was uh, i made several projects but i didn't documented anything i just documented the code i didn't documented how to do it basically so like right now i uh, i made a project uh, uh, yeah so i published a uh, blog on hackster uh, it's just a really simple uh, project uh, it uses all the uh, all the neo pixels provided by this board uh, so that you can use this board as a macro photography uh, lighting for macro photography so uh, the main thing is how uh, will you change the colors so as this board provide other things too for example if i just open this image uh, you can see there are several uh, there are two buttons basically three uh, the small button is for reset only so i was not going to uh, program that reset button to do something uh, i just kept it like that uh, so whenever i make a project using this board i set some uh, challenges for myself too because this board uh, is just a single core thing so you cannot do the uh, multi threading thing there is no async kind of thing in here also uh, as i am running micro python and not normal uh, c c++ code then i do not also uh, i also do not have uh, like what do you call that ayan uh, i'm <laughs> i'm forgetting the name uh, what thing interrupts so basically you do not have interrupts too so to change the color i basically uh, wrote two programs one was using uh, potentiometers you can use the potentiometer to change the uh, change the lighting change how much red you want how much blue you want the intensity of uh, each color and lastly i made a project uh, lastly i made an other iteration that that was using just the buttons as you can see over here uh, sorry this is that this is that so as you as you can see over here just uh, those two buttons one is for increasing the intensity of a certain color other one is to decrease the uh, intensity of certain color nice after this uh, i started i just after this i tweeted uh, that i will do a reverse engineering project i wanted to do engineering uh, circuit python in this constrained environment uh, i have less memory i have less uh, things to do i have less uh, programming features because circuit python does not uh, provide me with uh, some features some useful features so uh, what currently i am doing is uh, let me turn off this so like uh, you have ac at your home just do one thing turn on your ac take your remote and turn it on using your remote yeah then uh, just uh, increase the temperature you will see the moment you increase the temperature uh, it will also uh, show on the ac and the ac will uh, like actually increase the temperature just block uh, the ir of the remote and then increase the temperature ac will not work of course but the moment you again uh, control your ac like uh, again increase or decrease uh, using your remote the temperature then you will see that somehow ac remembers that yeah remote has 16 degrees celsius on it so how is that remote is uh, remote, remote must be sending uh, the whole packet the whole data that yeah remote is currently at 16 degrees celsius with humidity set at this uh, with fan speed set at this so how to reverse engineer that protocol it is just not sending that yeah user is now increasing the temperature it is also sending that what the current temperature is and everything at the same time whenever you are uh, pushing a button so it is a big packet actually so how to reverse engineer that so a blog will be up uh, in a week or something that's so it you are like trying to like find out like 
um, that uh, how many times like IR is turning on and off and like converting that into some like making some sense out of it. Yeah. And like uh, that big string and like making sense out of like which means the humidity, which part is humidity, which part is temperature, and which part is on on off. You know. Actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So these days they are sending like the big frame of packets at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So doing mm -hmm. this with an oscilloscope is really easy. You will see each and each and every bit clearly. Doing this with an Arduino is also easy, but doing this with a circuit Python it is not easy. Right. Awesome. Looking forward for your project. And uh, can you explain why uh, with Arduino it's easy and why with Circuit Python it's not that easy? Like in, Arduino, in Arduino, you have a ha helper function. Uh, basically, it is impl implemented in Arduino library. I do not remember the name exactly, but uh, it helps you find, uh, like, uh, uh, if you have a digital uh, communication. Use. So there must be a board at how many, how much speed uh, the transmitter is transmitting those bits. So to calculate that board, there is a helper function available in Arduino. You can just use the Arduino that function, and it will uh, throw everything. What frequency uh, the transmitter is using, what board is uh, transmitter using, and what data it is actually sending. But in Circuit Python, nah, that's not the case because again, you do not have certain helper functions like uh i again i forgot the name uh interrupts interrupts you don't have helper functions like interrupts so you can't uh, cannot do something like that in circuit python you will have to uh you know assume many things and write code like that so circuit uh, so you are you gonna use the ir receiver or the tsop for on on yeah. circuit playground board yeah I'm also you. I'm also going to use the transmitter on the board to again uh, tra transmit to the AC to replay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Looking forward for it. And congratulations for getting your project published everywhere. Uh, <laughs> it went viral. A uh, couple of suggestions I have is uh, uh, so uh, initially you were using potentiometer uh, to change the color R G N B, and uh, later you also added switch for intensity. Uh, one thing you can also do is you can use the induct uh, conductive pads on circuit playground board, and with every tap on on one pad, say R pad, you can increase uh, a value by ten steps. So that is something which you can also do. That's also a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so in, you can have three pads for RG, B, RG and B, and you can tap on it and increase by 10, 10, 10, 10 points. Uh, that's one. Other suggestion is uh, please add some macro photo photos. <laughs> Take some macro photos using that and add that. Right. Well. <laughs> can I? <laughs> oh, you can you can go really close with the phone and try to focus it. And you can install a third party app which allows you to set manual focus, and it, you can take some good man, uh, macro shots with it. There is actually an ent entire talk in PyCon Australia uh, using using Python to using Python to improve my photography skills, and there she showed how she made uh, something like this for macro photography. All right. Yeah, uh, I'll just put that talk and like watch that talk for. Months. Yeah, it was really great. So uh, she shared a lot of macro photos, uh, and that was the highlight of her entire presentation. So. Uh, like actually, uh, even even Mohit Bohite, I think has made something similar using a box kind of thing and a trinket and yeah yeah just just seeing the macro photos and the hue uh, and the saturation coming from these lights it's, it's amazing yeah he was using external uh, neo pixels right uh, one more thing is like when you when you go in a very advanced level and that is what I have tried last year so there is something called gamma correction. Uh, what is a gamma correction is so uh, suppose you want your led to show pink color but your camera because of uh, uh, because of the optical limitations it will not pick the pink color and that is because the led is not on all the time it is doing pulse with modulation and it's flickering so uh, there is something called gamma correction you can add gamma correction in your in your code it's basically a lookup table so if you want to show pink, this is the uh, RGB uh, value of pink in 8-bit. 
but to make camera see the pink you need to add some I do some mathematics on top of it. That's called gamma correction. So if you want to go on a deeper level, maybe you can also explore that. All right. Today I learned. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So next we have Insani Manav. So want to talk about what you're working on? Yeah. So uh, maybe I can share my screen first. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Can, I hope you can see my screen now. Yep. So recently I was talking to a friend of mine who actually challenged me to a game of FIFA. And I was recently learning about pandas and numpy. So I thought why not go to Kaggle, get a data set and run some analysis. So I got this great FIFA data set off of Kaggle. So I'm basically going to spend the next week running uh, a shit ton of analysis on this and trying to assemble an actual dream team, <laughs> which will consist of players from all different categories of players who can um, like who have more short power, uh, preferred like right or left. So I've done some basic charting to actually see what the data set is. This is just some elementary stuff I did yesterday. But uh, maybe I'll put a vlog out next week uh, when this completes up. Yeah, so this is precisely, uh, this is the only thing that I've been up to this week, to be very honest. Awesome. So what is, what is your goal here? My goal is to actually assemble kind of a dream team in FIFA so that maybe I can win a game. Awesome. Yeah, makes sense. And I'm going to be looking at maybe if I find some other data sets of maybe FIFA 18, uh, 17, I can actually compare what kind of uh, changes they made in player stats or players performances or if they did, if they did not. And like this is a huge data set. So uh, I am pretty sure I'll find other things out of this as well. So yesterday only I stumbled upon this little fact that players who kicked from the left foot have more short power as compared to the players who kick from the right foot. Awesome. So your algorithm will give you a list of player to pick? No, so mostly that is the stuff I'll be doing on my own. But yeah, I plan on training an actual uh, classifier or something to actually pick out some players and a team. That okay. will take some time. But uh, yeah, I do have a lot of time these days. That is a really cool project. Keep us posted. Sure. Awesome. Thanks a lot. So we can go to Animesh. Yep. Yep. So what you have been up to? Well, this week, the quiz, my remote work, yeah. and that hack on. Yeah, so you made any progress in hack on? Nah, it turned out to be a disaster. <laughs> Actually, the, tree, the team crumbled, kind of. It's it's hard to participate in a hackathon remotely anyway. <laughs> and actually, I I assembled the team on the fly. Okay, lesson learned. <laughs> so one of the members whose role was the critical one, he was the one with data science knowledge. Okay. He backed out at the last moment. Uh, that's okay. Everyone has uh, problems. And also the project was which was submitted to hack on one of them was found to be plagiarized oh okay that's all right okay. there is always always lesson learned <laughs> mm. awesome good luck for the next week yeah okay so raju now, Bay. now you're working on that that talk which one the API is one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're looking forward for that. Yeah. Awesome. So um the, there is nothing specifically new uh, but uh, for the last week, uh, but um, a lot some discussions regarding YubiKeys and uh, two factor authentications were uh, happening in the group. Right. So I think maybe maybe this could be a good time. I could showcase my uh, two-factor authentication key setup and maybe a demo of how it works. Yeah, dull, dull. Uh, a lot of people don't use it. 
for the fear that if what happens if they lose their key and what happens uh, if they lose their phone as well uh, or there are multiple levels of what if you lose this so uh, i think they, they don't apply because there are always fail safe uh, or recovery options That's available right. if some if someone loses something uh, raju i'll so i'm gonna, raju, just I'm... for now uh, raju can you hear me yeah i can yeah i'm going to i'm going to stop you for a moment because uh, this is a good lightning talk in itself so what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to record this and we will put it separately on youtube if that's if that's fine for you okay okay fine okay so i'll tell you when i'm ready with the recording and then you can go ahead with the screen share and all and also like uh, talk about it from the starting why we should use that and what's your setup about okay sounds okay. good so um yeah sounds good okay just give me a moment so all right we are good to go okay great so uh two factor authentication usually uh, from the start uh, since a lot of uh, password breaches were happening around the world a lot of uh, user data was being leaked uh, around the world um, and in some cases of some really big companies hundreds and thousands of passwords were leaked and uh, sometimes even leaked in plain text a lot of uh, companies were found to be storing their user uh, users passwords in plain text on the servers so a lot of these things keep happening to solve the, these issues a lot of uh, new ways were added in uh, so one of the ways was uh, adding a second factor of authentication so initially people started adding otps so along with your password uh, the service uh, or the website sends you an, you know, an otp on your phone you are and the otp so is on your cloud then there were also attempts in wherein uh, the user's phone could be uh, be could could not be in the original user's position and could be hacked or their or, the, or their messages could be spied so a lot of these things were happening so uh, i'm just going to share my screen so i'm speaking on my phone uh so for the i plan to also showcase the mic so i will be doing that through my phone camera and how it works on the website would be from my laptop's uh, screen share so uh, voice you're hearing would be from a different account and the screen share would be different so if you can see my screen now so originally yeah. u2f in fact uh, this is uh this is higher uh this is physical to you yeah i will say you have a key for your door lock uh but in case of a door lock uh, keys could be duplicate but uh, the hardware keys are not that uh, doesn't work that way uh i'm not a good expert at uh, what algorithms go behind or what exact technology goes behind so uh what i know do know that uh, the different levels of authentication here in uh, this, this these ubico is the company who made these fame made hardware keys famous, but there are plenty of other options and some even very cheap options so uh, ubiki is uh, very uh, costly but there are some cheaper options as well again uh, so uh, i'll go level by level if you are on a website let's say so i'll just show my screen with let's say my ubiki setup so i'll take an example of uh, github first i'll just uh, show you a login uh, and then i'll show show you how it has been set up so if you can see my screen uh, i am using github to login it is asking me for a password i will just enter the password from my password manager uh, you can do that anyways now i'll start my camera so maybe not a very good i need to increase the light in the room 
Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you can see my phone's camera, oh, it's on selfie. I need to use the other. Yeah. So this is my Yubiki, the first one. Then I also have another one, which is from a company, which which is called Nitroki. This is a bit damaged. Then this is also there. This is called Hyper Secure. This is the cheapest one. This comes around like 600 rupees on Amazon. You might not be able to get in these days, but usually it's very cheap. Um, this is around like 1,000 rupees in India. So there's a, there's like a uh, two times difference in both, both of them. Now, let's see what happens. On this, uh, I entered my username and password. So once I do that and click sign in, it now asks me how do I want to do the second factor of authentication. So for two factor authentication, there are multiple ways. One is to use a security key, which is I'm going to do first. There is also another thing called two-factor code from your phone. So I'll show how that works as well. So if I say use my security key, it will do a prompt like this, and it will ask me to enter a hardware key. Of course, I don't have a hardware key plugged in onto my laptop. So what I'll do is I'll use the, the cheaper one here, and I'll get it on my laptop USB port. Okay, the key is there. Now you can see the there's a light behind it and it is blinking. So it only blinks when there's a prompt around here. See, uh, the blinking has stopped because it waited for a certain time for my security key, which I didn't provide it in a, a proper time or the, the desired time frame. Now I'm going to retry. The prompt came again. The light is blinking again. Now this is actually a button. I'll need to push this button physically. Once I pushed it, the page authenticated and I'm logged in. Similarly, on this key, this one, this YubiKey, uh, as I pushed a button here, on this YubiKey, I need to do a touch. So I need to keep my finger physically here. Only then I would be logged in. Uh, in different... Uh, applications. So if you go to the website of maybe YubiKey or NitroKey, they have a list of services which work with two-factor authentication. So I'll just show you some. And it has a product setup so they have different products. I have a Nitro key and mine is a Nitro key U2F, which is this one. Okay, it is not having the website I was looking for. Yeah. yeah, so maybe it's here. So Okay, maybe I, I would uh, uh, look for the website later. Or if someone knows uh, websites working with U2F, so we could search for that with yeah so uh, there's a dedicated website for all these services and you could go through them category wise let's say for social uh, 
Twitter supports two-factor authentication now, or or and uh, most of the big websites do. A lot of them don't. So uh, even for code, uh, there are there is let's say let's say cloud computing. You there's a this, this is an, a very extensive list. Not many banking websites support U2F, so that's a bummer. They should. So the advantage is, uh, I'll show you the setup now uh, on let's say GitHub on how it is set up for me. So uh, so if, you know, on GitHub, you go to your settings, then you go to, uh, I'll switch my phone camera off and we could see the desktop screen share. So there is uh, SSH and GPG keys, security, yeah. So in security, there are multiple options. You can see that I have not configured my SMS number because I didn't want you to provide my phone number. If I have to use a security key, I first have to configure a, secu a second factor authentication using a TOTP method as it is known as. So there are, there are uh, you might be knowing or you need to look up applications such as the Google Authenticator. I don't use this one, but this is probably the most famous one. Uh, this is the one I use, pre-OTP, which is on F-Droid. F -droid so just to keep this talk very short, I'm going to... Looks like my internet is very slow at the moment. Or F-Droid web, F-Droid's website is taking a while. Oh, I don't want to do that. So I just will close the page for Google Authenticator. So there are many OTP apps. Uh, what they do is when I log in, I'll show that uh, If I don't have my, uh, when I log in, I enter my password. If I don't have the security key, I can use the authenticator app. And uh, the authenticator app, inside my authenticator app, I'll just, uh, I can't show my, uh, share my phone screen at the moment, but it looks like somewhat like this. Okay, my internet is taking a while. Uh, I don't want to uh, make this long. So yeah, so so you can see that uh, I have an authenticator app configured. Once you configure your authenticator app, then you can configure uh, multiple hardware keys. So you can see there is one security key. Uh, as an as a demo now, what I'll do is I'll configure another security key. So uh, I'll start with this now. This is the final demo and then only we'll end. So uh, my overall internet. Okay. So you can see that uh, this is my security key, which is already configured. So I'm going to configure this YubiKey now with my GitHub account. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. So, so in on GitHub, you, I can only set one particular hardware authentication device. I don't want to do that. Um, so maybe we could try on GitLab, which allows multiple uh, devices to be used. Oh. My internet has taken a beating. Okay, guys, I'm very sorry. My internet is just not loading websites. So it's 
very very slow right now so i did give a initial demo yeah yeah so uh, maybe we could uh, do this another time i could sure. show a demo of actually configuring a key sure so maybe so, that for later so this short one is fine yeah so maybe i i'll talk about a uh, bit about my 2fa setup as well so uh so basically there's one project by google it's called open sk where they have they have uh, made it possible for you to make your own 2fa keys it runs on nordic nrf2 nrf52840 which is a very uh, very amazing uh, system on chip uh, so this is the dongle which i am using for my 2fa and this is the entire project it's open source it supports fido it supports uh, almost all the uh, two factor authentication protocols and this is complete open source project so you can make tweaks accordingly and select your encryption methods and uh, read about it so it's called open sk and that's the dongle which i carry with me for my 2fa uh, so some people have some questions that uh, what happens uh when i need to log into my phone using my phone uh so for example if you are on android then that's not an issue because you can directly plug in your uh, usb key and you can do that using an otg port uh if you are on iphone things get little messier there but again iphone has uh, apple has open support for nfc based chips so for example the neo by ub key that has nfc which you can tap on the back of your phone and uh, get your key authentication and uh, also this nrf52840 chipset which is this one i'm talking about it has bluetooth so in future there is a possibility uh, there is uh, a chance you will see a lot of products designed around this which supports bluetooth so you connect these keys uh, using bluetooth to your phone and then you will be able to authenticate it the basic idea is your private key lives on this and you can uh do that for two factor authentication and there is also one amazing uh, 3d printed enclosure being developed by the community which allows you to carry it safely uh so that's the one on thingiverse it's open source you can use it yeah that one uh so basically the idea is you need to press a button right which raju showcase so this 3d printed one has a small button uh type of mechanical setup built in and the and the board has button on board so using this this thing you can press this button and this uh, entire thing will keep it safe so yes if you want to make your own keys uh, this is a dongle you need to buy it's called nri5240 it comes for around 1100 to 1500 rupees depending on where you live and this is the project uh, open sk which you need to flash on that yeah so i hope uh, i would like to add to this yep. just just a short addition uh, as i and mentioned that uh, on phones you can attach your uh, keys as well uh, using the otg port as well as if your phone supports nfc there are some uh, hardware keys which has nfc uh, but even if you don't have nfc on your phone and you don't want to to be attaching your keys by otg all the time uh, it what you need to know is whenever setting up second factor authentication on your services remember this order so first is your password second is your 2fa using your uh, otp application on on your phone so on my phone if i don't have my keys around i don't look for the key the hardware key i use the auth authentication app which provides me a six digit otp code which i enter on the website i am logging in and that logs me in and next is the the actual hardware key so if you don't have the hardware key you can use the otp password so let's say even if i am somewhere where i don't have my hardware keys around me even on my laptop i can still use the otp so if you use these three things always and uh, do not set up hardware keys without the otp not being set up already there uh if you have these things set up you can log in from uh, any device you don't need to use otgs and stuff but if that's available that's also good awesome and i believe there are also some recovery codes which you can save in case you lost everything yeah so uh, when you are setting this up let's say if you set uh, 
if you if you're on github if you want to set up a hardware key first they watch, uh, want you to set up a otp password uh, using an authenticator app once you do that uh, the, for the authenticator app there's google authenticator as well as a lot of open source authenticator apps as well i use one app called free otp uh, once you do that then it asks you to put, set up the security key once you do the security key it it gives you a recovery code which is in case if you lose everything else so it, you need to keep this recovery code safe somewhere it's a long string of numbers and alphabets you need to keep this secure somewhere else maybe you can keep it in some cloud folder or on a physical hard disk or maybe print it and store it in a locker if you lose access to your hardware key if you lose access to your 2fa let's say if you lose your keys if you lose your phone and uh, your password is of no use because you it would require you of any of those two then you can get that paper out or get that uh, password out from somewhere if it's on a cloud you can get that and you can recover your account so there are, there are always fail safes so it's not like if you lose the security key you won't be able to get back login but it's much better to use this instead of just the password right and if you are one of the most unluckiest person on earth who lost your keys who lost your uh, mobile phone otp sim card and even the recovery code then also these companies will support you you need to prove your identity and this might takes a couple of weeks but there are provisions provided by google and other organization that will help you get back your account if you can uh, give enough support of evidence that that's belong to you so yes that is two factor authentication for you and everyone should be using that these days uh google has made it uh, mandatory for all the employees to use it especially to protect against phishing attacks and yes if you have any questions you can ask later in the telegram group to raju uh next we have for show and tell shivam who tweeted this morning and his tweet went viral <laughs> uh, some of the cute projects he has been doing so shivam would you like to share that hey hi hello uh, right now i am in balcony because uh, my my room is full of you know people so uh, i am doing some free free form projects kind of thing so it is visible to you yeah we can see uh, and, and I'll, i'll also i'll also share my screen and show the photos if that's fine with you okay as uh, this is a second one uh, i made this uh, today so it's it's a cube made up of uh, registers also uh i'm doing this kind of uh, free form circuit these days so it is made up of brass wire and uh, it has a led and uh, a resistor uh, you can also use the copper wire uh, so yeah i am doing these kind of stuff these days also i am helping zion to build the meme pages and the gallery for the ilegd website and uh, also i am doing some research around microcontrollers um yeah that's it awesome so uh, would you like to share your screen and show the photos which you posted i think that would help okay okay so uh my screen visible yeah we yes. can see 300 likes there <laughs> so these are the tiny uh, uh registers so i i made this <laughs> i don't know why i made this but so yeah so they, these looks pretty cool and also uh this one this is a little cube of registers so yeah i am doing these kind of things <laughs> awesome let me know when you are taking the pre orders uh, sorry pre orders let me know when you start taking pre orders okay <laughs> you know uh, shivam uh, 
this cube thing uh, it made me remember uh, a question uh, like uh, you know uh, in 11th and 12th class you used to do how uh, many places how many six configuration <laughs> yeah so there was this question in which you had uh, the same configuration uh, in a 3d cube a configuration of resistors in 3d cube uh, it made me remember that question <laughs> it was a pain in the ass to solve those kind of questions what was what was the question so the, the 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 project which you can make is you can say alexa how many faces are in a cube and the number of faces should be equivalent to number of leds blinking on your cube <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome thanks a lot so we have ruchika ruchika want to share your projects think she is not available so that also also i want to share something uh, i am helping my brother these days you know he is a youtuber so i am doing the editing stuff for him and uh, and also yeah uh, also i am doing the inscape these days thanks to mason <laughs> so that's it amazing yeah so i think that left it with me all right so i'll share what i have been working on this week so a few things which i have been working on so all my projects have been deployed here and there so i have photos so i learned how to make uh, these kulfis if you will uh can you see my screen yeah yeah that's that some handmade kulfis i learned and if you want to have the recipe <laughs> let me know it's open sourced <laughs> it was really good to learn this uh, second thing if you remember last week i showed uh, how i uh, managed to play nes games on on the pi batch right but the thing is pi batch has a very small display it's the 1.8 inches and uh, it's not good to play games there for a very long time and also my parents wants to play the super mario game because nostalgia right uh, so i i I, st i started to see where what are the possibilities to bring that back to life and there is a project called retro pi where you can play all the old games on your raspberry pi but the thing is you need to have a game controller uh, but i didn't have a game controller you can buy old game controller with usb from amazon but we are in lockdown so what i did is i used my pi batch as a game controller i i wrote a short a uh, small piece of code so basically these are all uh, buttons in the pi uh, in the pi batch and these are acting as uh, keyboard uh, these buttons and these are communicating to my raspberry pi and on the raspberry pi i'm playing super mario bros and this is on the big screen as you can see so now everyone can play in the family and it's it's quite good it's it was good to play it handled on this device but again as i said only 1.8 inch screen so now we have the entire 15 inches display to play that so yes that was one project and this is a small video i have so i was recording with one hand and i was playing with the other so yeah it works uh other than that uh was one more thing so if you know about the company particle a particle has a good line of boards right one of the board particle has it's called a particle xenon so this is a small board so particle sent me a lot of these boards last year to experiment and xenon boards have mesh networking protocol using bluetooth 5.0 but recently what they announced is that they are not supporting these boards uh, starting a few months back because they think it's a lot of efforts and their customers are not using it that much so that left with these boards completely useless for me so what i decided is because this uh, this this board runs nri52840 chip the same chip i showed you uh, the from the nordic semiconductor right and the best part about that chip is that chip is also supported in circuit python so theoretically speaking we can run circuit python on it 
but the biggest thing is that this uh, board runs a proprietary bootloader by particle so if you want to run a circuit python on it you first need to change the bootloader uh, to the uf2 bootloader and then you need to program it with circuit python uh, so this is an arm cortex m m4 chip and changing the bootloader means you need to have expensive programmers like segar jailing and that programmer costs around uh, 8000 rupees in india and of course lockdown so i cannot get that programmer uh, and that is again a proprietary programmer not open source but i found one amazing project it's called open ocd open ocd is basically like programming and debugging uh, toolkit if you have used the uh, avr you know that avr dude or avr isp kind of thing that's open ocd for arm so it has profile for all the arm cortex m series processors and it knows like uh, which protocol this works on so it can flash bootloader on top of it the best part about this you can use raspberry pi gpios to act as a programmer for this device so raspberry pi gpios will turn on and off in that fashion that it will it will create a protocol and that protocol is known as swd single wire debug so this protocol is working uh, these raspberry pi gpios with the with that open ocd program are working as an swd programmer and this method is called bit banging so using bit banging you can make any protocol like even if you don't have a native spi but you want to do spi you can do that using gpios using a process called bit banging so i experimented with that and luckily i got success in just one night so first of all i connected that also i don't have a jtag uh, here so if you can see closely it has a jtag port so i connected and soldered the wire directly so first of all i i ported the bootloader and i was able to port the bootloader then i ported the entire circuit python and i was able to run the entire circuit python uh, on this board so success the open ocd project made me remember uh, another project uh, basically it was uh, made for think pads older think pads uh, so you uh, use a similar setup using a raspberry pi and its gpio to reflash the bios of older uh, think pads it right. made me remember that that's right that is right so yeah similar kind of thing i've been doing here so that was uh, what i've been working on this uh, this week and uh, regarding the bios kind of thing is so you uh, so uh, i think last year in uh, fast asia singapore i came across this open bios uh, uh, project where if you are running an old computer and your uh, motherboard is not shipping any bios upgrades so what you can do is you can take the bios chip so bios chip on your motherboard is a small flash uh, 8 mb or 16 mb kind of dip switch uh, dip ic you can plug plug that out from the socket and you can put it in a breadboard connected to the raspberry pi and flash uh, new bios such as open bios so similar kind of thing i did here and i was able to run circuit python so that was my project of the week uh, hey ayan you- you said that uh, that uh, that the board has m4 right yeah so uh, i i want to use that uh, 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 the f I, i'm doing F, uh, some research on fpu these days so is that m4 or m4f uh it's m4 uh, because it it along with the m4 it has lot of uh, 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 wireless ca- wireless uh, capabilities wifi open thread and uh, 2 2.4 gigahertz Uh, but it also has an inbuilt fpu uh, floating processing unit if, if that's what you want yeah <laughs> because i am not able to find any emulator online to uh, you know code some uh, t- test some code uh, regarding emulator i'm not really sure but i think uh, texas instruments code composer studio would have some uh, f uh, m- m4 with f f fpus uh even microsoft uh, vs code plugin uh, it is a plugin available for uh, to emulate uh, these boards they also have a few fpu thing you might want to look at that awesome. okay thank you yeah so if anyone has any question so we see it this time so it went uh, uh, long so generally we do 9 to 10 30 but it's good because we have one great lightning talk by raju and if anyone wants to share anything uh, so uh, officially the meetup is over but unofficially we can continue so if anyone wants to share anything any tip any hack any pod- uh, i will just add to uh, your one project uh, i also did something similar to that uh, super mario project whatever you, you were doing like you were using uh, your uh, pi batch uh, to control as a controller so uh, i only have uh, 
you know circuit python board uh, the one uh, you uh, we have uh, so what i was using uh, what i was doing that uh, previous year uh, i made an instagram story uh, for that project i was playing senendias gds senendias using that uh on pc so yeah it was kind of a miss but the moment i whenever i take a flying vehicle like a helicopter or something it was really crazy all right uh, it worked really well and then i thought of why not use uh, this circuit python board uh, to randomly activate cheats right Cheat. wow so i made a hardware based uh, chaos mode so after every 30 second it will inject a new cheat code a random cheat code wow that will be amazing that that is super cool idea so <laughs> Maybe I if, you, that. if you can share the code i also want to do that <laughs> yeah so sure. i will have to look for the code uh, also, also now we are talking i am thinking that uh, uh, let's map the circuit playground accelerometer to the car uh, driving joystick <laughs> and we can drive it using the accelerometer you know yeah sure right awesome awesome all right so any hacks you learned new new things any tips i updated to uh, so i i up upgraded to ubuntu latest one on my separate machine which i which i'm not using but so far it's good thanks to latest kernel and latest I'm going to do that soon. Um, well. Oops, uh, sorry, I have muted you by mistake. <laughs> okay. oh, no problem. Um, I have shared a link uh, in the description. Um, it's live currently. Uh, yet to like uh, add uh, like shortcut for this link on the main website, but this will live like our meme page. So like if you want to have a look. Awesome. And we. Uh, we are also designing a short like a documentation like how you can upload uh, new memes over there also there would be a template page awesome that's so great all right so when are we going to have the i like the birthday just wondering it's around october now september october okay uh, yeah, just a small, just a small update. Uh, we are also brainstorming about having a virtual conference, and uh, that is a Linux conference, uh, virtual conference entirely. Uh, some somewhat around August. Uh, the the dump of the brain of 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 people present in the meeting from the last volunteer call is on GitHub. So if anyone wants to contribute to that. Uh, feel welcome uh, the idea is to have a, a two day virtual conference uh, single track uh, the talks will be on jitsi only the speaker and the host will be there and for the q and a we going to have a discord server with individual channels that is the idea so far but we are uh, just in uh, brainstorming stage so if, if you want to be a part of that uh, in managing team if you want to propose any ideas, uh, GitHub issues are there in the volunteer task. You can find the issue and you can uh, put put that in the comments. Yeah, so that's one update from my side. So if we don't have anything else, maybe we can conclude the call. We can stop the live stream and we can play some scribble. Sure.